On January 6th, then-President Donald Trump got a frantic call from House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. At the time, the mob was reportedly breaking into his office through the windows, and McCarthy begged Trump to stop them from overrunning the Capitol. But Kevin McCarthy was not the only person who pleaded with Trump on the phone call to call off the attack. Politico's now reporting that as lawmakers were evacuated to a safe room, Congressman Jim Jordan of Ohio was joined by Congressman Matt Gates of Florida. Together, they quote, and this is Politico's reporting, implored Trump to tell his supporters to stand down per a source with knowledge of that call. When asked about the call by Politico's Olivia Beavers, Congressman Jordan responded, quote, look, I definitely spoke to the president today. I don't recall. I know it was more than once. I just don't recall the times. He is getting very good at that, huh? The January 6th committee, this raises important new questions. Did leader McCarthy know about this call when he tried to appoint Jordan to the committee? And will the committee call Jordan and Gates to testify, given they are now in the center of the insurrection timeline? Olivia Beavers, congressional reporter for Politico, who broke this story. Joyce Vance, a former U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Alabama, also co-host of the Sisters in Law Legal Podcast, as well as an MSNBC legal analyst. And they both join me now. Olivia, just uh, if you could sort of flesh out your reporting here about what we know about this phone call, when it happened, what, what may or may not have been said in it. Certainly, Chris. So we know that when lawmakers were evacuated from the House chamber, he essentially went into this back room where... Congressman Jordan, from his cell phone, was trying to reach the White House. He was patched in with President Trump, and Matt Gates participated in that phone call, in which source of knowledge says that they basically were telling Trump that he had to tell his followers to stand down. The source declined to say what Trump said in response. What was not included in the report is that I was also told um, this source uh, knew also that there were other phone calls made to Mark Meadows after these phone calls. So we're, we're kind of getting some clues and details into how Trump's allies were basically reaching out to the White House as there were still rioters uh, trying to break into the Capitol building. And it raises more questions about what these conversations and what the nature is um, and whether any other allies were also trying to call Trump and say, you need to say something. I just want to just that I, I, I want to sort of make make the subtext the text here for a moment. And then, Joyce, I'm going to turn to you on a legal question. But just to follow up, Olivia. So the, the, the one theory, right, when uh, I mean, we've all seen Jordan's performance, I think, as a reporter, you get a pretty good nose for when politicians don't want to answer a question. You don't actually have to be a fresh reporter to see that in Jim Jordan. He's been very squirrely. And I think one theory was like, oh, well, he was somehow complicit in this or he was like cheering it on or something. But what emerges from your reporting and it's you know, it's not definitive yet. We'll find out. Is that like it's the opposite? He, like all sensible people, were saying, dude, call off the dogs braying at our doors. And he doesn't want people to know that because if they know that, that implies that he understood, as Matt Gates did, and anyone with half a brain, that the president was obviously responsible in some ways for them being there. Absolutely. I mean, the, the, the suggestion is that they were trying to say, this is bad, you need to get involved. That was the message to the president that they had. And as to whether or not how the president responded, we still don't know. But there were frantic phone calls being made and that they were placing this phone call away from other members trying to implore him to, you know, get involved. And we saw that speech that he made hours later uh, that, that was basically reluctant, hesitant, yeah. and, and far too late. So. We know the president did yeah. eventually speak, but not when these phone calls were being placed. Yeah, he said, I love yeah, you after they so. bashed a bunch of cops' brains in. Um, I want to ask you this legal question, Joyce, because this is fascinating terrain for me. So this is NBC News reporting that the committee is going to ask phone companies for Republican lawmakers' records. The records are of uh, Lauren Boebert of Colorado, Jim Jordan, Mo Brooks, Madison Cawthorn, Matt Gates, Louis Gohmert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Jody Heiss, Scott Perry, Andy Biggs, Paul Gosar. It's sort of the usual suspects there. What, what do you think about that, that request? What, what legal uh, status is, is it going to have? How much of a fight is that going to be? There's a larger question here because the legal issue that's unresolved, Chris, is whether a committee like this can subpoena a member of Congress for testimony. Right. And these records are a little bit different from testimony itself, but certainly we should expect to see these members try to delay the committee's process by challenging in court whether there's some sort of extended speech or debate clause protection for these records. Um, 
spoiler alert, I don't think that there is. I think the law is pretty well established that not everything that a, a member of Congress does is done in their official speech and debate clause capacity. And we've got this interesting take from DOJ in the civil lawsuit filed against Mo Brooks and the former president and others, where DOJ talks about conduct that is outside of the official function because it's, for instance, electioneering. Or one might think that fomenting um, an insurrection might be outside of a congressperson's official scope of responsibilities. So these subpoenas can go forward. The information that, that the um, House committee will get is probably pretty limited at the outset. It will let them see which numbers we're calling other numbers, and that may help them devise a strategy for which witnesses they actually wish to call to speak and take testimony from in person. Just to follow up on, on, on what I just said to Olivia, in terms, I mean, we, we saw during the inauguration, right? Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> during the inauguration, during the second impeachment, uh, that there was, you know, the, the case presented, right? That the theory of the case is that if you got people calling the president to say, call off the dogs, the obvious logical entailment of that is that they think he controls the dogs, ergo is responsible for them, and that if you show more members of Congress doing this, it, it, it just further bolsters that view of the responsibility, whether that's a just ethical or legal responsibility. So here we're talking about political accountability as opposed to what might be happening up the street from Congress in the Justice Department, where they could have an investigation into criminal responsibility. In terms of creating a public record, I think you're absolutely right, because if members of Congress are treating the former president as though he had control of the mob, yes. that gives you an awful lot of insight into what they believed. And it's important to put people on the record under oath, because something we haven't talked enough about the work of this House Select Committee is that its goal is to build a historical record that people right. can rely on. Nothing says reliability like putting people under oath. Great point. Final, very quickly question. Am I right, Olivia, your, your reporting indicates there were multiple calls with Jordan and Trump on that day? That is what Jordan told me when I asked him about his phone call with Gates. He said that he, he doesn't recall when, but he recalls that he has had multiple conversations. And then he sort of then goes, you know, it, it probably would make sense that one of those phone calls would have happened in that safe room where they were evacuated. So he, yeah. he didn't... Yeah you know, directly confirm. But, you know, at one other point I want to quickly make, uh, I've had a few sources saying, you know, if you keep on saying, I don't recall, you could just go back and look at the records so you could start filling in those blanks if you really wanted to.